problem would say like h of x equals f of x plus g of x and it would say find h prime of 2 or something like that. So that means that we want to find the derivative at 2. The first thing you do is to work out what the derivative of h is. And you use formulas that you already know. Okay? If this is f of x plus g of x, I know that the derivative is f prime of x plus g prime of x, right? And so since I want it at 2, I'm just going to plug in 2. And then I'm going to go to my table, to 2, and I look for f prime and g prime. And that's my answer. Make sense? So you just use whatever formula you know to find the derivative. And then you just look at the table and use that information. Now there is a couple kind of weird ones, but let me show you the basic ones first. Okay, let's say it said h of x equals f of x divided by g of x. And this time, maybe it wants us to find h prime of 2. So do I just figure out what f of 2 is and g of 2 and divide it? Or f prime of 2 divided by g prime of 2? What do I have to do? I have to do the question rule because it's a question. So I have to find the derivative like the way I know how first, using my formulas. Then I can go through and use the table to help me get everything I need to know. Now, because I know I'm doing it too, and to save sort of a step, I'm just going to go ahead and start with the bottom, but go ahead and plug in 2 for x. Okay? So the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. Alright, and then I'm just going to figure out all these little things. So g of 2 is 5, f prime of 2 is negative 1, f of 2 is 1, g prime of 2 is 3. I'm using all of those in that column there. Okay. So we have That is a negative 8 on top. I multiplied a negative 5 times negative 1, but that's not true. Okay, any questions? Product rule would be the same, right? Okay. Let's say that it told you that h of x was f of g of x, and it wants us to find h prime of 2. What kind of rule are we going to use on this one? Chain rule? Yeah, it's the chain rule. And so it's been a while since you've looked at it in this form. So let me remind you how do you do the chain rule when you see f's and g's. The derivative, you take the derivative of f, you leave g alone, then you take the derivative of the inside, which is the g prime of 2. This one is a little bit more confusing because you got to think about where the derivatives go. It's not a derivative on the inside. You leave the inside alone. Then you find the derivative of the outside. Or of the inside, outside. Questions about that? Okay, so that would be f prime of, go ahead and figure out what g of 2 is. It's 5. And then I'll come back and do the rest. Okay? 
So that G of 2 is inside the F prime parentheses. So I've got to find that before I can figure out F prime of it. Okay. So then I do F prime of 5, which is 2. G prime of 2, which is 3. And so I get 6. Any questions about that? Okay. Let's do another one. Um, try that one by yourself. All right, there's a couple more. There's one more that's kind of weird involving an inverse. But before I do that, I just want you to think about what would happen when it's not just F's and G's. <coughs> How would I find the derivative of this one? This is the same as g of x to the one half, right? So I would find the derivative by doing the power rule. One half times g of x to the negative one half. And then don't forget to go back and multiply by the derivative of the inside. Does that make sense? I did the power rule with the one half, one half g to the negative one half, and then I found the derivative of the inside. So there's a couple like that that look kind of weird. You'll have to do stuff like that. Um, I think you could probably finish it. Do you want me to put in a number and go there, or are you okay without that? Okay. If you had to put in the number, this right here just means that whatever you get in there, you would do 1 over the square root of that. And you could leave it as 1 over square root of 3 or 1 over square root of 5 if it didn't work out, and that'd be okay. Okay, another one similar to that, what if it were h of x is 1 over f of x, and I were finding the derivative of that one? What do you have to do on that one? You could do the quotient rule if you wanted. Or we can rewrite it as f of x to the negative 1 and then find the derivative using the power rule. So what would the derivative be using the power rule? And then we can put the numbers in and all that. Okay. Very last one, and this one, or last kind. This one's probably the most difficult. And this kind involves an inverse. Okay? So let's say that it said for you to have h of x equals f inverse of x. And they told you that they wanted you to find h prime of 1. Okay, this particular derivative, you cannot just put the negative 1 in front and subtract 2 and multiply the way we just did on the previous problem. Because that negative 1 there does not mean that this is 1 over f of x. That negative 1 stands for an inverse. Okay? Now, when we did inverses with derivatives earlier, we, um, we did them when we talked about, like, explaining what the derivative was, where we switched x and y. Okay, the first thing that we know is that whatever is in here, it switches. So even though that says x, it's really y. Okay, I don't know why it's done that way. I don't know why we have to write the notation that way. But always remember, no matter what's inside that parentheses, if there's an inverse, this is really the y value. Okay, now. Besides the fact that that had to switch, when we switched, or when we talked about the explanation, what else had to switch in the explanation? Did 
the units. We had to flip them, right? Instead of um, miles per hour, we had to switch it to hours per miles or whatever. We flipped whatever the units were, okay? That means that the derivative here is going to flip, okay? And so whatever the derivative is at whatever value that we're looking for, we're going to do one over that to get the inverse derivative, okay? So here's what you do. You do one over f prime of whatever the x value is. That's like the formula. Anytime you have an inverse, it's 1 over f prime of the x. But the hardest thing that you have to remember is that the x that's given in the problem is really y. So this 1 is y. So I go to where f of x is, and I find the y place that it's 1. I don't look at the x values and find 1. I look at the y values in 5 and 1, and right there it is. Does that make sense? So what's the x value at that place? 2. So this is really a 2 on the bottom. And then I find the derivative at 2, which is negative 1, so I get negative 1. So it's 1 over f prime of whatever the x is that corresponds with the value that they give me because the value they give me is going to be y since we're talking about an inverse. Questions? I'm going to give you a couple more to try. Okay, try both of those. G prime of the x value corresponding with that 2. So I go to G, I go to G of x, and I look for 2 on that line because that's where the y value is. That's how I get the x value. So the x value is 1. And then I do the derivative of 1, which is 3. So I get 1 third. Okay, on the next one, it's 1 over f prime of, okay, this time the y value is 0, and I'm going to go to the f's because f is what I'm looking at at this problem. I'm looking for 0, my y value is 0, so what's my x value? 5, and then I have 1 over f prime of 5, which is 2.